As tensions with Beijing continue to mount, Taiwan's president has announced that the nation will extend its compulsory military service from four months to one year. This move is expected to enable the country to better respond to any contingencies, including a potential invasion attempt. The changes will come into force in 2024. The move comes just 24 hours after China sent 71 aircraft and drones into Taiwan's Air Defense Identification Zone, or ADIZ, which is a record number. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how Taiwan is planning to increase military power with new conscription rules. Let's get into the details. This video is sponsored by War Thunder, the most comprehensive military vehicle online game for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, in which you can go to battle on more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s. The game has an amazing attention to detail and focuses on a realistic combat experience, which is why knowing your vehicles and skill really makes a difference. It's easy to get into and all you need to play is nothing more but your mouse and keyboard or controller. Immerse yourself in cross-platform combat with more than 20 million other military vehicle enthusiasts from all over the world. Download and play War Thunder for free using the link in the description below and also get a free bonus tank, aircraft or ship and three days of premium account. Currently, all Taiwanese men over 18 have to serve four months in the military, which includes an initial five weeks of basic training. This policy dates back to 2018, before which the conscripts served more than two years. Under the new plan, the boot camp phase will be increased to eight weeks. The conscripts will also be better compensated, with the monthly wage going up from the current $211 to around $856. Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen's security team, including high-level officials from the Defense Ministry and the National Security Council, have been reviewing Taiwan's military system since 2020, an official brief on the matter told Reuters. Importantly, while the previous reduction in the length of compulsory military service has been aimed to increase support among primarily younger Taiwanese voters, as well as boost the workforce and the economy, there now seems to be significant public support behind the reversal of this policy. In a survey by the Taiwanese Public Opinion Foundation conducted recently, around 73% said they were in favor of the extension. Earlier, the conscripts were trained mainly in small arms fire, but things will change now. As per reports, training will include instruction on FIM-92 Stinger shoulder-launched surface-to-air missiles as well as anti-tank missiles. Viewers may note that these relatively easy-to-use weapons have been instrumental in helping Ukraine stand up to the Russian onslaught. Conscripts will undergo more intense training including shooting exercises and combat instruction used by U.S. forces. So, the idea is to make the conscripts into potent warfighters who could be used for the defense of key installations, but also support frontline combat troops. This also points to the wider move toward enhancing asymmetric warfare capabilities with a special focus on fighting in urban environments. It's important to note in this context that the U.S. is lining up $10 billion in foreign military financing grants over the next five years to Taiwan. U.S. relations with Taiwan is governed by the Taiwan Relations Act. The Taiwan Relations Act neither confirms that the USA will intervene militarily if China invades Taiwan, nor does it relinquish it, maintaining a strategic ambiguity. As per the pact, the United States will make available to Taiwan such defense articles and defense services in such quantity as may be necessary to enable Taiwan to maintain sufficient self-defense capabilities.
Taiwanese President Tsai said Taiwan wanted peace but needed to be able to defend itself. As long as Taiwan is strong enough, it will be the home of democracy and freedom all over the world, and it will not become a battlefield, Tsai told a news conference announcing the decision to extend the conscription period, which she described as incredibly difficult. Tsai added, the current military system, including training reservists, is inefficient and insufficient to cope with China's rising military threat, especially if it launched a rapid attack on the island. The American Institute in Taiwan AIT, which serves as the de facto U.S. Embassy in Taiwan, stated, We welcome Taiwan's recent announcement on conscription reform, which underscores Taiwan's commitment to self-defense and strengthens deterrence. Shai Cheng, researcher at the National Policy Foundation, a Taipei-based think tank, estimated that the extension could add an extra 60,000 to 70,000 manpower annually to the current 165,000 strong professional force in 2027 and beyond. Taiwan does possess the economic strength to support this move. It's grown sufficiently in the past few decades and has become a $775 billion economy and is the 22nd largest economy in the world. Taiwan is the 11th largest trading partner of America and controls nearly 60 to 65 percent of the semiconductor chip business in the world. Chinese Communist Party makes no secret of its claims over Taiwan and has clearly indicated that it was willing to use force if necessary. In October 2021, President Xi Jinping vowed that China would never commit to abandoning the use of force to seize the island. In the last few years, there has been a significant uptick in Chinese military rhetoric against Taiwan. Since 2020, the number of incursions by PLA aircraft has increased around five-folds. There has been speculation that China will attempt an invasion by 2027 which is the centenary of the founding of the People's Liberation Army PLA, and by which it would likely be fully prepared. The move on conscription by Tsai's government clearly shows that it is not sitting idle and has taken cues from the Russian-Ukraine conflict. The military leadership seems to have paid close attention to how a smaller but well-trained, suitably equipped Ukrainian military has held far larger and more powerful Russian forces at bay. Taiwan, whose defense budget is dwarfed by China, would hope that it can at least offer enough resistance up until a time that military assistance could be provided by the international community, similar to what we are witnessing in Ukraine. The overall aim is to make Taiwan a porcupine, agile and hard to attack. Subscribe for more videos like this, hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.